You want to talk plants? Hibiscus, plant family Malvaceae, or Malvaceae. Malvaceae is mallows plant family, including marshmallows, the original marshmallows, mallows growing in marshes. As early as 2000 BC, ancient Egyptians were enjoying a gooey treat made from the mallow plant sap, mixed with nuts and honey, similar to what we now call marshmallows. The sweet treat was very special and reserved only for gods and royalty. Marshmallow plant species, now Althea officinalis, it's native to Europe, Western Asia, and North Africa. Now also naturalized in North America, where it was introduced as a medicinal plant. By mid 1800s, small candy stores in France whipped sap from the mallow root into a flappy candy. It was a time consuming process done by hand, and candy stores could not keep up with the demand. By late 1800s, Modified cornstarch molds were used to speed up the process. To keep up with the prime matter demand, the mallow root was replaced with gelatin. Even though today's marshmallow candy do not have any mallow root sap anymore, this speedier manufacturing process is actually beneficial for the mallows and the marshes, saving the mallows in the wild, as well as the marshes that would have been trampled upon to collect the marshmallow roots for candy. By early 1900s, marshmallow candy were introduced and popularized in the United States, where they are still a very important part of American culture and cuisine. The genus name Hibiscus is derived from the Greek name Ibiscus, name which Dioscorides gave to marshmallow plants, now Althea officinalis. Malvaceae plant family also includes cotton plants, and even trees such as linden in Europe and basswood in North America. The genus Hibiscus includes numerous species as well, and two in particular are very well known and cultivated as ornamentals throughout the world. Beautiful tropical Hibiscus rosa sinensis, an Asian plant with numerous common names, Chinese Hibiscus, Hibiscus rose, and Hibiscus syriacus, also known as a rose of Sharon. Even though named Hibiscus syriacus, Rose of Sharon is also native to China in South Central and Southeast China. Rose of Sharon is frost tolerant and is widely cultivated as ornamental in temperate areas. Besides being beautiful, Hibiscus flowers have an interesting adaptation of having the filaments of the stamens fused together to the styles, making it easier for pollinators as the stamens and stigma are in such close proximity. Hibiscus brachynregii, it's the state flower of Hawaii. And on mainland North America, you could find several native hibiscus, such as this rose mallow, Hibiscus lasiocarpus. Okra used to be Hibiscus esculentus, now Albemoscus esculentus. But today's episode, it's about a drinkable hibiscus, common to probably many of you, Hibiscus subdarifa also known as Roselle or Sorrel, and numerous other common names throughout a wide range of cultivation. Hibiscus subtarifa is native to Africa, possibly West Africa, and it was cultivated in the West Indies and Asia for the last several hundred years, now naturalized in many places where there is no frost. A perennial flowering shrub growing to about two, two and a half meters tall seven to eight feet tall, and cultivated as an annual even in areas where frost happens. Almost all plant parts are used for something somewhere in the world. Stems are used in India to make fiber, to make burlap. Roots are used in Brazil for their stomachic and emollient medicinal properties. And hibiscus subtarifa's leaves are cooked as vegetables in a variety of dishes, or dried and powdered similar to an herb in many Asian cultures and cuisines, making the species of hibiscus a very versatile plant to know, grow, and enjoy. The plant part of hibiscus subtarifa that might be the most intriguing are their red fleshy calyxes. Calyx is the sum of all sepals within a flower. The sepals, most commonly green, form a protective layer around the flower in bud. The word calyx is derived from Greek, 
meaning bud, husk, or wrapping. In Sanskrit, kalika also means bud. The word calyx with an I instead of a Y, it's also from Greek kylix, meaning cup or goblet. And most times, the shape of the calyx in a flower has the shape or a cup or a goblet. Calyxes of roselle, hibiscus sabdarifa, are used throughout Western Africa and the Middle East to prepare cold, sweet drinks, often also mint or menthol flavored, or mixed with other natural fruit juices, such as pineapple, watermelon, ginger, as well as spices, such as cinnamon and cloves. In the Caribbean, the plant and fruit are called sorrel, which is, in other parts, the common name for these leafy greens in the Rumex achetosa plant species. Throughout Caribbean, Mexico, and Latin America, refreshing beverages are concocted by boiling fresh, dried, or frozen hibiscus sabdarifa calices. In Mexican restaurants in the U.S., the beverage is sometimes called Jamaica, Spanish pronunciation for Jamaica. In Jamaica, the beverage is also popular and often flavored with rum. In North America, specialty south-of-the-border stores, as well as natural food markets, sell dried hibiscus calices as Flor de Jamaica for making tea. In North America and Europe, with Germany as one of the major importers, dried calices are used as natural food coloring and flavoring. Jams, preserves, and pickles are made from fresh hibiscus calices and fruits throughout a wide geographical range, from Trinidad to Nigeria, Myanmar, India, and Australia, and many others in between. China and Thailand are the largest producers of roselle calices, while Sudan and Nigeria produce some of the best roselle in the world probably the natural growing condition in its native regions providing the best conditions. Numerous other countries produce and use large amount of roselle plants for their delicious calices, but also for their leaves and stems. After I discovered hibiscus in herbal teas, I was surprised to find out that it is the calices and not their petals that are the source of this dried stuff. Delicious, even though sour and probably delicious because it is sour. Later, I was again very impressed to see this plant in flower and fruit late in the season at St. Louis Botanical Garden, meaning that there is a chance to being able to grow it even if as an annual, as it is frost sensitive. Why should you consider including some of this hibiscus subtarifa in your life, and maybe even in your garden or greenhouse? Hibiscus tea and other similar beverages made with hibiscus subtarifa calices are rich in antioxidants, polyphenols, flavonoids, and anthocyanins, powerful phytochemicals that can improve overall health and are also considered to have cancer-preventing properties. Hibiscus tea might reduce blood pressure, claims supported by a study who asked participants to consume three servings daily of about 258 ounces of hibiscus tea, and also by a meta-analysis study that considered numerous previous studies. But again, like all research, it needs more research. Hibiscus tea might help cholesterol levels. Again, more studies are needed, but so far there is support that even when overall cholesterol levels might not change, good cholesterol, HDL levels, have increased, while bad cholesterol, LDL levels, and triglyceride levels have decreased after regular consumption of hibiscus tea for several weeks. Cautions. Drinking hibiscus tea in moderation is generally considered safe. Hibiscus tea is a naturally calorie and caffeine-free beverage and can be served hot or cold. But since it's naturally sour, sugar or honey is often added, which brings in additional calories. Consuming high amounts of either hibiscus beverages or taking supplements could be problematic, especially due to these potential side effects. High intake of hibiscus might decrease blood sugar and blood pressure levels, a problem for people on medications or patients preparing for surgery. Hibiscus consumption can also interfere with the function of some medication. For example, chloroquinine. Chloroquinine medication was developed 
in the first half of the 20th century to treat malaria. But if these health aspects are not of concern to you, you might consider including some of this hibiscus, subdarifa, roselle, sorrel to your life. Hibiscus kombucha. A few years ago, I discovered kombucha. Eventually, I gave in and looked into how to make it. I opened a website explaining how to make it. But when I got to the part that it needs sugar, I just closed the web browser. A couple of days later, I gave in again and found out that actually yeasts will eat the sugar producing alcohol, followed by bacteria eating the alcohol. Both these yeasts and bacteria then producing beneficial phytochemicals that can make this beverage not only delicious for some of us, but also potentially healthy. About a year into making, drinking, and sharing this hopefully healthy bubbly, I discovered June tea, which is honey kombucha. Kombucha is a naturally carbonated fermented tea. You make a concentrated tea, sweeten it with sugar or honey, cool it off, Add a SCOBY that is adapted to consume either sugar and black tea or honey and green tea, cover the jar, place it in a dark warm spot of about 21, 27 Celsius or 70, 80 Fahrenheit degrees, and then strain and bottle, refrigerate and enjoy. Temperature and SCOBY depending, it takes about four to five days for the honey and green tea SCOBY, also known as June tea, or five to seven days for the sugar and black tea scoby. After about four days, I check it with a straw for taste. Also use visuals and smell to determine if it is time to strain and bottle. If you like it more vinegary, you can allow it for longer fermentation. But I realized that it might be better to um, separate it sooner and allow for a slower second fermentation in the refrigerator after straining and bottling. When you can also add a fruit juice, ginger, more tea, hibiscus tea, the SCOBY, symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast, is specific to which sugars it can process. And you should purchase or acquire from a friend the one for the sweetener you are planning to use, sugar or honey. Here is hibiscus kombucha that I made using a combination of green and black tea and organic sugar and a concentrated hibiscus tea made using about a half a cup of dried hibiscus calices per four liters or a gallon of water. If you do not want your scoby to become red from the dark red anthocyanins of the hibiscus, you can, maybe even better, mix the concentrated hibiscus tea to the already made kombucha or jun tea. Here I combined about 10 liters, 2.5 gallons, of fresh of the SCOBY June tea, honey kombucha, with a concentrated hibiscus tea made with one cup of dried hibiscus per two liters or a half a gallon of water. Are there any cautions to drinking kombucha or June tea, the honey kombucha? Like most things, probably okay and hopefully healthy in moderation. Problems? Slight residual alcohol levels of about 1, maybe 2%, high acidity that can be a problem for your teeth enamel. And it is a good idea to swish or swirl some water through your teeth soon after enjoying kombucha, which you should probably do after a soda as well. Its acidity can also be a problem for people that have um, common stomach acid reflux, in which case I suggest you learn more about the benefits of apple cider vinegar, a very impressive plant product that you should learn more about. Cheers.